Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Prime Minister for the advanced copy of her statement. The Prime Minister may want to try and sell yesterday's summit as a great success, but to borrow a phrase, the reality is nothing has changed. The Prime Minister says if we reject this deal, it will take us back to square one. The truth is, Mr. Speaker, under this government, we've never got beyond square one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The botched deal is a bad deal for this country. Yeah. And all Yesti did was mark the end of this government's failed and miserable negotiations. There can be no doubt that this deal would leave us with the worst of all worlds. No say over future rules and no certainty for the future. Even the Prime Minister's own cabinet can't bring themselves to sell this deal. The Foreign Secretary said yesterday, and I quote, this deal mitigates most of the negative impact. That's hardly a glowing endorsement. <laughs> the silence from much of the rest of the Cabinet is telling. They know these negotiations have failed, and they know it will leave Britain worse off. In fact, the National Institute for Economic and Social Research confirmed this today, saying the Prime Minister's deal would mean our economy would be 3.9% smaller than it would otherwise be. This is more than our net contribution to the European Union, which is currently 8.9 billion a year, around 170 million per week. So why is the Prime Minister claiming that extra money to the NHS will be due to the Brexit dividend? Of course, Mr Speaker, we look forward to the official Treasury forecasts and indeed the legal advice that this House voted to see nearly two weeks ago. Yeah, where is it? Where is the Prime Minister's claim this deal takes back control over our borders, money and laws is frankly a fallacy. Yeah. The reality is the opposite. The Prime Minister says the political declaration should give us comfort that the Northern Ireland backstop won't be needed. But in June 2020, this country will be faced with a stark choice. We can agree to extend the transition period or accept the backstop. So can the Prime Minister confirm that under her deal, if we are to avoid the backstop, we will have to accept whatever the European Union demands to extend the transition period? Yeah. Leaving a choice of paying more money yeah. without a say on the rules or any a backstop leading to a regulatory border down the Irish Sea. Yeah. So much for taking back control of our borders, money and laws. Yeah. Mr Speaker, it may not end there. The President of France, President Macron, has already made clear what his priorities will be in, ne in negotiating Britain a future deal. On Sunday he said, we will concentrate our efforts in order to obtain access to the British waters before the end of the transition period. And of course, all our fishermen will be protected. Isn't it the case that under the Prime Minister's botched deal, we will have to agree to those demands on access to waters and quota shares if we want to finalise a future trade deal or extend the transition? Breaking every promise the Prime Minister, the Environment Secretary and the Scotland Secretary have made to our fishing industry and our coastal communities. And there was another climb down over Gibraltar at the weekend. Isn't it the case that Spain isn't it the case that Spain now has a role over Gibraltar benefiting from any future relationship that is still to be negotiated, not something the Prime Minister presented to the Commons last week. Mr Speaker, in two weeks' time this House will begin voting on a legally binding withdrawal agreement and the vague wish list contained in the political declaration. The Prime Minister would be negotiating that future agreement from a position of profound weakness, threatened with paying more to extend the transition, with no say over our money, laws or borders, and at risk of the un utterly unacceptable backstop, which was only made necessary by her own red lines, most of which have since been abandoned by her. Yeah, exactly. 
Is it not in the national interest for the Prime Minister to plough on when it's clear this deal does not have the support of either side of this House or the country as a whole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, ploughing on is not stoic. It's an act of national self-harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of threatening this House with a no-deal scenario or a no-Brexit scenario, the Prime Minister now needs to repair a plan B, something her predecessors failed to do. There is, sense, there is a sensible deal there is a sensible deal that could win the support of this House based on a comprehensive customs union a strong single market deal that protects rights uh, Order, order, order when the Prime Minister was addressing the House, I made it clear that she should be heard, and by and large, she was. Those chuntering or yelling from a sedentary position, stop it. It's rude, foolish, and doomed to fail. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. There is a sensible deal that could win the support of this House, based on a comprehensive customs union, a strong single market deal that protects rights at work and environmental and consumer safeguards. The Prime Minister may have achieved agreement across 27 heads of state, but she's lost support of the country. Many young people and others see opportunities being taken away from them. Many people who voted Remain voted for an outward-looking and inclusive society. And they fear this deal, and they fear the rhetoric of the Prime Minister in promoting this deal. Exactly. Likewise, many people from areas that voted Leave feel this deal has betrayed the Brexit they voted for. It does not take back control. It will not make them better off. And it will not solve the economic deprivation that affects far too many communities and towns and cities across this country. This deal is not a plan for Britain's future. So for the good of the nation, the House has very little choice but to reject this deal. Yeah.